recently added a video on the Moog News and a lot of you kept asking about the live jam that I did and the MIDI mapping that I used to control the drums in particular. And it's actually a very simple and fun workflow. So I thought today maybe it's time to give you a little insight into how it works. And uh, what you see here is the Ableton project that I'm working with. And it consists here of this pad sound that's just holding indefinitely from the Moog Muse. The drums from the ADX-1, actually just recorded on one stereo track, very simple beat. Um, then here the Buchler, which does a little percussive melody and I think it's really very interesting to group it together with the ADX-1 because now it sounds like percussions, but they also harmonize and are in tune with the bass line and the chords. And yeah, lastly here we have the bass line from the Moog Grandmother. And this is where the fun begins. Now let's maybe look a bit at the MIDI controller. If you have the interface here, you can see that it's meant to be used, or one of the main suggestions is to just control your door. Uh, and the mixer section, yeah, so we, this could be used to control just the volume in Ableton and here you have record, mute and solo buttons and uh, some macro controls. And I'm sure there's a lot of standard mappings for this uh, to control various DAWs that you'll be able to download somewhere. Uh, but I personally don't use it like this. Um, I always just have it blank and then uh, while working on a project I suddenly have uh, ideas for individual mappings so it's always empty and then if I for example want to uh, control a filter and map it to this POTI um, I just do it while I'm in the session. And now let's have a look at the various decisions that I made here for this jam. So let's first start playing the drum beat and the bootler. And now let's have a look at the effects that I have here on the group. First thing you can see is the beat repeat here. And I have actually four different beat repeats with different timings. And they get progressively longer from left to right so that it's easier to memorize. So these are the four beat repeats. Then here I have an effects group and as you can see as long as I hold the button the effects group is activated and when I let go it's, uh, it's gone. And the same goes for the beat repeats and everything else. And then I map the auto filter here on this button, uh, on this poti. So this is always a fun move. And as you can already see I can start to combine this. Yeah. in interesting ways. And then this group actually doesn't just consist of the filter, it also consists of a phaser and an RC20, but I don't actually control them, they're just there to give some flavor to make it more complex and not just so, uh, so simple and uh, predictable. And then here I have two more effects groups. This one is a very subtle one, it's actually just a delay I think. Yeah, but it has some built-in modulation here. So the filter and the, uh, is, is moving and is uh, because of the big amount of feedback there's some movement and I put it behind the beat repeat so that when I hit the beat repeat I can also hit this effects group because now it's perfectly static but if I now start to actually use the delay on top of it now this one static beat repeat has some movement because of this built-in modulation here on the delay. Then lastly, here on this one, I have a spectral resonator and here I'm also utilizing a fader, controlling the decay time of the spectral resonator. And this is now more than enough to perform live with it in a very intuitive, fun way.
section, but another interesting thing that you can always do is of course to use plugins. And this way you can, like for example here, one of my favorites, the Arturia CS80 plugin, uh, which sounds really great. And uh, if you are using a synth plugin, for example, of course now you can use MIDI uh, mappings to control the sound even more because now you are actually at the source of the sound. And here I have a little pattern prepared, a little arpeggio. And the first thing that I mapped, of course, was the cutoff frequency of the filter. Allowing me to control the harmonics in a performative way. And then what's also great about the CS80 are these two faders here. As you can see, I can control separately for the individual voices or oscillators, which are now panned to left and right here. I can individually control the octave, but it doesn't just jump in octave steps, it actually jumps a fifth as well. So here it's minus one octave, neutral, plus a fifth, plus an octave, plus an octave and a fifth, two octaves, yeah, that's it. And now this is also something that you can use very performatively. And as you can see now, all of this is recorded and I could even use it later to just edit it. And I could record a MIDI performance and then go in there and fix all the little details that I didn't like, but I still have this human um, touch uh, in the production now. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the way I use this MIDI controller. Of course, these were just a handful of ideas and there would be a million possibilities, but the idea I wanted to get across is this workflow of um, yeah, finding creative ways on the fly um, of interacting with the sound in a way that you want right now and then just map it. And how I would do it from a purely technical standpoint, just so you know, let's say I want to have an auto filter here and I want, it's extremely easy, you just press MIDI up here and if I now want to control the cutoff frequency and map it to this potty here for example, all I do is click on it with the mouse, hold it here and then while I hold it turn the knob and now it starts to appear up here and um, now it's already mapped but I can even control the actual uh, range where it controls the filter. For example, let's say the lowest position I want for the filter is actually just a thousand hertz um, because that's the range I find musically useful right now. Then I um, yeah, program it here like this and now Let's hear it again. The filter doesn't go all the way down. It just goes to where I programmed it. Yeah, this is obviously also good to know. But yeah, from a technical standpoint, this is exactly what I did for all of these mappings here. I just hold them here with my mouse and then touch whatever I like here and then program the actual conditions of how I want it to be controlled. And that's it for my MIDI workflow.